morning, everyone, and uh, welcome all our uh, in-person students, our online students. A warm welcome to you as well, and uh, to also our uh, e-learning e students. Um, how are all of you this morning? Good? Yes? Waiting for the weekend to come? <laughs> Happy Friday. Yes. My audio is really low. Okay, they're saying the audio is very low. I will increase the volume, yes. Can you hear me now? Is it louder? Sam, is it louder now? Hello? It's the same, slightly better, same. Now is it fine? Some more, madam. Okay, can you increase the volume a little more, please? Is this fine? Yes, yes. Slightly better. Is this okay now? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jera. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your help. Okay. Okay, let's begin the class. Can I ask one of our uh, online students to please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone can lead us in prayer? Online students? Can unmute your mics and please pray? Anyone? Nobody wants to pray. <laughs> Lord and Master, we give you praise and adoration this morning. We commit today's session into your mighty hand that you take absolute control and lead us in all the things that we will be learning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kofi. So last week, we began looking at uh, this APC publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. And we saw that God has a... What does God have for us? A plan and a purpose and a dream for each one of us. Okay? So is God's plan and purpose for our life a mystery? Something that we don't know? Or does he reveal it to us? He makes it known to us. His plans are always good. So God has a plan and a purpose, but what should we do? God has a plan, a purpose, and a dream for our lives, but what should we do? You should? You need to ask God, yes, as simple as that. You need to discover God's plan and purpose for your life. What else should you do? What else should you do? Once you know God's plan and purpose for your life, what should you do? You can say it, even if it's wrong, doesn't matter. We need to act on God's word. What should you do? You need to cooperate with God. Thank you. You need to cooperate with God to fulfill his plan and purpose. And um, when God gives you a plan and a purpose that he just give it to you and say, here, take, this is my plan and purpose. What does he do? How does he work with us? What does he do? Starts with a P, the word. What does God do? Well, I'm not reading your uh, course content. Please read your course content and come for our lectures. It will be nice. Okay? It was very simple. We hardly did three or four pages. And you had one week, you could have read it. We need to partner with God, okay? But what do we, what does um, God do when he gives us his plan and purpose? He gives us grace. Good. What does he do? He prepares us, right? He prepares us to fulfill his plan and his purpose. Okay? And uh, even as we go about doing God's plan and purpose for our lives, we will make mistakes. Yes or no? Yes. But God is greater than our mistakes. God can help us overcome our failures. 
and he can help us complete his call, right? Lucy says he enables us, he empowers us. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we can make mistakes, but God is greater than our mistakes. He can help us overcome our uh, mistakes. So that is what we um, saw or we studied um, uh, last week. Okay. And I request all of you, if you come to my class next Friday, please read your notes. It will hardly take you 10 minutes because I have just done four or five pages and four or five pages is not going to take you five hours it's just going to take you half an hour so please take half an hour to read and those of you who are hindi speaking students please take the hindi um uh, copy of version of this book and please read sab log pad ke aana hai next class okay okay just don't sit here looking blank please please read so it will be more engaging our class and more interactive okay and also request for our online students please just uh, read through because it's just four or five pages that i did last week and uh, it's good to refresh yourself and come for the next class thank you okay another important thing to keep in mind even as we go on this journey of fulfilling god's purpose for our life is that satan will stop us from fulfilling god's plan and purpose for our lives okay so god a god given dream a god given purpose will always face demonic opposition okay satan will try to bring in delay satan will try to bring in uh, opposition he will bring about hindrances okay but we need to know that delays you know what is delays right you know when the train gets delay delayed right when the train doesn't come on time it means it's delayed okay so delays are not always from God. The book of Daniel in chapter 10, you know, we read that Daniel was praying about a certain thing and it took him 21 days to receive the answer for what he was praying. How many days? 21 days. But the moment he prayed about it, the answer was already released in heaven. But why did it take him 21 days? It was not because God did not have emails or it was not because God did not have a mobile to send him an SMS or a WhatsApp message. Okay. It was because there was demonic spirits that were interfering and stopping the angel from coming and giving the message to Daniel. Okay. So we need to understand that delays are not always from God. Satan also attempts to delay are miracles satan also delays the answers that we need to get now why does um you know he caused delays why does delays happen delays happen so that it weakens our desire okay it weakens our desire it weakens our drive that means you know our motivation it weakens our determination and also satan uh, brings about these delays so that we can get distracted okay hey this is not working you know i'll just do something else so we get distracted so delays why does satan bring about these delays is to weaken our desire you know to follow god to pursue god to wait on god to do what god wants us to do to weaken our drive to weaken our determination and also delays are introduced by satan to create distraction now why does satan do this satan does this so that he can rob us of our desire to fulfill god's plan and purpose for our lives we get very fed up we get mayus ho jate hum log you know we just give up we don't want to continue okay you wait for one month you wait for two months and then you say god this is not happening let's plan a is not working so let's go to plan b or let's go to plan z okay and let's take on another plan because this is taking too long but what we need to do is we need to be focused on god's goal we need to be focused on what god is calling us and these distractions simply break our focus okay distractions simply break our focus and you know what happens when we break when our focus is broken right it can get easily distracted it cuts our speed 
it uh, removes our eyes from the goal and there is no perseverance there's no endurance we just feel lost and we are doing something else and satan is very happy about that okay so we need to remain focused on our goal and you know um because he, satan also knows that when he brings in distractions it's going to waste our time and our energy okay so when we're distracted god is telling us hey i want you to do this and you're trying to do it and you are not seeing any fruit you're not seeing anything that is happening you know you're just working hard you get disappointed and then you turn your eyes maybe you're focusing on your family or your children or some business or something else that you know you are getting interested in and then this gets sidelined your calling what god wants you to do is you know taking a back seat and you're not able to continue it and you're wasting your time and energy on other things and you're not able to put that time and energy on god what god wants you to do okay so um it's very important that's why the bible tells us to run our race with what does the bible say we need to run our race with how do we need to run our race online students in person students how do we need to run our race sorry with endurance with perseverance what is the meaning of endurance and perseverance you know a spider what is when you when a spider is spinning a web and you try to pull down you pull down the web what happens what does the spider do what does the spider do it makes another one in the same place you pull that down what it will do again it will keep on spinning and spinning and spinning in the same place try it you know so it will do it again and again and again it never gives up that is endurance that is perseverance so run your race with endurance that is set, the race that is set before you and even as you run that race of life even as you journey on in life you know there will be seasons where you will have struggles there will be challenges there will be difficulties but the good thing is that you are going to taste victory or you are going to see victory okay so the guarantee is that even though you face challenges and difficulties you are going to face uh, come to a place of victory so when you come to that place of victory all of your struggles are forgotten because you're tasting victory victory is very sweet you're excited and you're glad that you've arrived at your place of victory okay so here is some encouraging news you need to run your race with endurance why because when you run your race with endurance with perseverance it demoralizes your enemy satan is very demoralized that means say are what is this i'm trying to do everything to hinder this person but this person is just sticking to god's plan this person is not quitting is not giving up this person is not getting distracted this person is not running off in another direction this person is not wasting their time and energy on anything else and that demoralizes your enemy he gets very upset he gets demoralized and he thinks that hey you you know you're sticking with your plan you're sticking with god what god wants you to do you know you got some stickability and satan gets demoralized so your endurance is demoralizing to him okay so you know something god has called you to do you know that god has called you here to apc bible college you know you might face a lot of challenges you might face a lot of difficulties you might not like the food you might friday you have never fasted in your life friday's fasting prayer you know so much of studies so much of uh, work to do you're not able to do all of this you're not able to understand english you're not able to understand what is taught and all this is demoralizing you just want to leave everything and go okay but you know you if you know 100% that god has brought you here then you endure you persevere you stick with god's plan god will give you the strength the grace and the energy and your endurance is demoralizing to him okay so this is chapter 1 okay and i want you to please read through this uh today even as you have study time right 
So please read through this. And next week when you come for class, please on Thursday, make sure that you all read lesson one, chapter one, and also chapter two, whatever we are completing today and come, okay? And please take down some notes so that you know your mind is not lost because you're just looking at me and uh, your mind can wander. So if you're listening and writing, taking down notes, then it also helps you to concentrate and not fall asleep. Okay. Okay, fine. Any questions on chapter one? Any questions on chapter one? Any questions? If you have any questions, online students as well, you can post it on the chat section. Okay, thank you, Lucy. No questions. Okay, if there are no questions, then we will move on to chapter two. Yes, can you please take the mic and speak? Please take the mic. Please give him the mic quickly, Moses. Please pass on the mic quickly to him. Sorry? You have to come up in front, please. Just... No, the online students, excuse me, the online students have to hear you also. So. so please come quickly up in front, if you don't mind. Thank you. Come this side, please. Hi, everyone. Is audible? Online students, can you hear him? Is it on the mic? Online students, can you just say something? Say hello, hello. hello. Hi. Hello. Yes, yeah, they can hear you. Yeah. So my question is, uh, you told that uh, Daniel. Daniel. Is about Daniel. And uh, he go, uh, he prayed for 21 days to get, get his answer back from the uh, heaven, uh, from God. OK, why it took 21 days? A second thing is, his might be Daniel distract from his goal. Keep your mic closer, please. Yes. Yeah. Might be that Dan Daniel distract from his goal or his focus. Might be. So why he is like distract? Is any there is any reason? Okay. Behind it. Second question. And uh, uh, and how he get back to his uh, like focus? How he focus on? Uh, okay how he is focused on his uh, like goal again. Okay. Uh, these three things. Three questions. Thank, Thank you. you. So his first question is, um, uh, why, did, um, why did it take 21 days for Daniel to receive his answer? I already mentioned the reason. I said the first time he prayed, he, the answer was already released from heaven. But the angel that was, are you listening? The angel that was bringing his answer was stopped by demonic forces. Satan, Satan's um, angels, demons, they stopped the angel that was bringing the answer to Daniel. Because they didn't want the answer to come to Daniel. They didn't want the truth to be revealed to Daniel. So the angel of God was engaging in a warfare, in a fight with the demons. And finally, there was another angel who came and helped him. And he was they were able to overthrow these demonic forces. And then the angel was able to come and give the message to Daniel. Okay, so I already said this, but I'm repeating this for you. The second question is, um, did uh, Daniel lose his focus? No, Daniel did not lose his focus. How do we know that? Because it was 21 days and he still kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Even if it would, would take 41 days, 61 days, he would have still prayed. Okay, so he was he did not lose focus. He kept praying because he knew the answer will come and the answer finally came after 21 days. How did he refocus? He did not have to refocus because he was already focused. Okay, good questions. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we look at chapter two. Can you please read, turn to chapter two, please, everyone? Now, in chapter two, we will discuss, you know, yes, God has a plan and purpose for our lives. God has a dream for our lives. 
but how do we know how do we recognize god's plan and purpose for our lives okay how do we find out so we're going to look at nine guide posts in the coming weeks and we already saw this and it's mentioned in chapter one you know we looked at it in point one point six in chapter one uh, for me it's page number seven i don't know what page it is for y'all this is the old edition of the book so there are nine guideposts nine ways we can know or discover god's plan and purpose for our lives page eight okay and here even in um, uh, in chapter two it's also mentioned the nine guideposts are also mentioned okay so even as we go through these nine guideposts in the coming week i want you to even as we go through this i want you to think seriously okay we are helping you to find out god's plan and purpose for your life so even as we are going through it you know i want you to write down what you are learning what you are able to relate to you know uh, and uh, you know i wanted to think about it for your own life and you can say yes you know even as we're going through these guideposts you can say yes i can see this in my life i can see this in my life so this is how god is leading me this is where he's leading me this is what is my plan and purpose for my uh, life okay so even as we go through these guideposts you know it's leading us to god's plan and purpose it would be good to spend time to think about it analyze examine in your own life and by the time we complete these nine guideposts you should be in a position you know where you're able to basically have a general sense of direction uh, you know to know where god is leading you what he's doing with your own um, life okay so first of all i want to establish the fact that you know we can know god's plan or god's will for our life god's will or god's plan for our life is not mysterious like we said last time some people think that god's plan and will for our life is mysterious we don't know anything about it it's not true okay god um, works in ways that we can understand we can see we can know his um, will okay so uh saying that god's will is not is mysterious it's not scriptural it's not biblical because look at ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 to verse 17 okay ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 to 17 can one of you please read that ephesians 5 15 to 17 seeing them that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Cyril, for posting the, the verse on the chat section. Now, in verse 17, it says, understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Can we understand the will of the Lord? Can the will of the Lord be understood? Yes. Okay. We can't sit around and say, hey, I don't know what God is up to in my life. I don't know what God is doing in my life. The Bible tells us in this verse, in Ephesians chapter 5, that we have to understand what the will of the Lord is. That means the will of the Lord can be understood and you can know for sure what God's will is for your life. Okay. So look at Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. Can somebody please read Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11, please? Any online student can read that? Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. Shall I, madam? Yes, go ahead, Lucy. Yes, madam. Colossians chapter 1, 9 to 11. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. 
So here, you know, um, uh, Paul, even as he's writing to the church at Colossae, he's actually saying a prayer. He's praying. Now, when he's praying, does he expect his prayer to be answered? Does he expect his prayer to be answered? Yes or no? Yes. Right? Like when we pray, we expect God to answer our prayer. Okay? So he's saying, what is he praying? He says he wants the church to be filled with what? Look at your Bibles. Look at your books. What does he want the church to be filled with? The knowledge, just knowledge, wisdom and knowledge of what? His will, okay? So he, he wants them to be filled with the knowledge or wisdom of his will, okay? So even as Paul prayed this prayer, can we also pray the same prayer? Yes? What can you pray? Knowledge, wisdom, will. What do you pray? God, fill me with knowledge of your will. That means, God, give me an understanding of your will. And when you pray that, do you expect God to answer your prayer? Yes. So start praying that. Okay? Uh, pray and say, God, I want to be filled with the knowledge or the wisdom of your will. Okay? And um, he continues and he says, you know, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So here is the key. What is the key? Okay, the key is we need wisdom and we need spiritual understanding to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Yes, we can pray, God, fill me with the knowledge of your will. But it takes wisdom and spiritual understanding to know his will. Is there a difference between wisdom and knowledge? Yes, no. Yes, some of you say no, some of you say yes. What is the difference between, a, between wisdom and knowledge? Knowledge is something like facts, okay? Wisdom is from God, okay? Knowledge is what? Using of knowledge is wisdom. Okay. Knowledge is when you read. Uh, knowledge is uh, information. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Knowledge is information, what you get from the internet, what you get from books, what you learn, what you are taught. All that is knowledge. What is wisdom? Wisdom is uh, deep insights of okay, God's revelation. Okay, deep insights. Of God's revelation. Of God's revelation. Okay, thank you. Wisdom is how to apply that knowledge. Okay, wisdom is how to apply the knowledge. How to use that knowledge in the right way. What, what is right, what is wrong. How to know what's right and wrong and what to do. So wisdom actually helps you apply the knowledge that you have learned in a profitable and in a very useful um, way. So we can ask God to fill us with the knowledge of his will, but it takes wisdom and knowledge to know his will. Okay. So the next several weeks, we're actually going to, even as we study this book, you are going to receive or you're going to be imparted with wisdom and knowledge to understand the will of God. Okay. You're, you're going to receive wisdom and spiritual understanding even as we study the word of God so that you can be filled with the knowledge of his will. Okay. Now, once you are filled with the knowledge of his will, what are the things that can happen in your life? Look at verse 10, please, everyone, and tell me what would happen when you are, um, when you are filled with the knowledge of his will. What will happen when you're filled with the knowledge of his will? Come on. You will walk worthy of the Lord. Yes, that's the first thing. Second thing, you may be well-pleasing to him. Yes. Third thing, you will be fruitful in every good 
work. Okay. So if you want to walk worthy of the Lord, if you want to be well pleasing to him, if you want to be fruitful in every good work, it depends on what? What does it depend on? If you want to walk pleasing to the Lord, if you want to do be fruitful in every good work, if you want to uh, be fruitful in everything, if you want to be well pleasing to him, what should you do? What is it dependent on? It's dependent on the knowing the knowledge of his will. Okay. How many of you want to be fruitful here? Okay, some of you don't want to be fruitful. Okay. How many of you want to be pleasing to God? How many of you want to walk worthy of the Lord? Tell me, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? You need to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Okay. So many of us are working and working and working and we see no fruit. And then we are wondering, hey, why is there no fruit? Why is I'm, I'm doing so much, but why am I not getting anything? Maybe you need to start at the very beginning and you need to know if this is what God wants you to do. If this is God's will for your life. Because when you are in the center of God's will, even though you face difficulties and challenges, you will be fruitful in every good work okay and the fourth thing is what he says increase in the knowledge of god okay so it's like a full circle you know his will when you know his will what happens you will walk worthy of him you will walk pleasing you will be well pleasing to him you will be fruitful in every good work and you will increase in the knowledge of god it's like a circle okay so you know, when you know the knowledge of his will, you will walk worthy of him, you will walk well pleasing to him, you will be fruitful in every good work, and then you will keep increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay. Look at what First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 says. Can one of you please read that, please? First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Can I read it, sister? Yes, please get through it. Go ahead. Yeah. First Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ye heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gertrude. Uh, Paromita, you have your hands up. Do you have a question or do you want to say something? Okay. We all like verse 9 and we all quote verse 9, right? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no has entered in the heart of man the things that God has planned for our lives. Okay. Yes, God has great good plans uh, for us. But how does he reveal it to us? How does he reveal it to us? Through his spirit. Yes, through his spirit. He reveals it through his spirit. So you see that, you know, Paul doesn't just stop there, you know, by saying, hey, you know, uh, God has great big plans for us. He does not just stop there. Like some of us as Christians, we just stop there. But he continues to say, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay, and it says, who has known the mind of the Lord? And it says, nobody can know the mind of God. Nobody can know the thoughts of God. But we are special people. We can know the mind and the thoughts and the plans that God has and the purposes God has for us. How is it possible? How is it possible? How is it possible to know the plans and the thoughts that are in mind in the mind of God? Through Holy his spirit. spirit. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Thank you, Moses. Through his spirit. And that is why we have the mind of Christ. Okay? Through his spirits, no, just through his spirit. Spirit is one. Holy Spirit is one. Okay? So through his uh, spirit, okay? Uh, so when somebody says, hey, I wonder what is in the mind of God or in the heart of God, 
towards me. I don't understand. You can just complete by the sentence for them by saying, hey, you have the mind of Christ, which means the Holy Spirit will reveal the plans and the plans and the purposes of God accurately, correctly, and completely to you. Okay. So we don't have to go around life like a blind person, not knowing where, where to go, what to do. Okay, just wondering what God is doing with our lives. We can understand the will of God. We can be filled with the knowledge of his will because we have the Holy Spirit who reveals it to us and we have the mind of Christ. Okay, but it's important to know that even as God reveals his plan and purpose to us through his Holy Spirit, it's going to be progressive. What is the meaning of progressive? slowly okay it's it's not like god is saying hey take this book in this book there are um you know for 62 pages in each you're going to live 62 days of your life and each day i've written what you have to do take it read it and do it here take your manual no does god does not tell that to us he's not a god who does that okay he reveals his plan and purpose step by step season by season so he he brings us here for a season maybe you're in a bible college for a season and in the bible college you're here to prepare yourself to learn you know to equip yourself and you have another season to get into so even as you get into your next season god will prepare you right now for this season in life okay so everyone's book is open Yes, please keep your books in front. Some of you are lost in dreaming. Okay. So, you know, it's enough for us to keep, you know, know which season we are in now, what God wants us to do. And also it's important for us to ask God to reveal what is the next season for our life so that we can plan and prepare. Okay. Now, how do we understand this? Look at what Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 says. Can somebody please read? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines even brighter unto the perfect day. Yes. So it says the path of the just. That means the path of a righteous person. All of you here are righteous. Anyone here unrighteous? Why do we say we are righteous? Because when we are born again, Christ clothes us with his righteousness. Okay. So it says here that, you know, when the sun comes up in the morning, 4, 4.30, is it very bright? No, we can see some things, but there is not much of clarity. We can't see much. But as the sun keeps coming up and up and up, you know, things become more clearer, things become brighter. And it reaches midday, you know, the zenith of the day. Everything becomes absolutely clear. So that is how God's plan is for our life. He'll tell us, hey, I want you to do this. You just step out in faith. And then as you keep taking each step, things becomes more clearer and clearer and clearer. Let's look at two examples. One example is in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Okay. Can somebody read that, please? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. So here it says, you know, uh, it's giving the great testimony of Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed God when God told him to go to a place. Did God tell him which place? Did God tell him which place? No. He just told him, go, leave your father's household, and I will take you to the place which I'm going to give as your inheritance. So if we were going to meet Abraham as he was traveling and say, Abraham, where are you going? What would he tell you? I don't know where I am going. You'll be shocked. All I know, Abraham will tell you, is that I'm going to a place where God is going to show me that place, and he's going to give me as my inheritance okay so even as abraham stepped out god led him and brought him to the place where he was going to give him as an inheritance amen so even as you step out in faith god is going to take you and show you and that is how we need to walk by 
faith okay so and uh, god is not going to give you every day of your life and say hey this is what you're going to do every day write it down for you 50 years this is your book no you know he's going to read uh, lead you step by step it's going to be progressive small progress small steps okay look at another example genesis chapter 24 verse 27 genesis chapter 24 verse 27 yes get through do you have your hand up you want to read Yes, please go Genesis, ahead. Genesis uh, chapter 24, verse 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Amen. Amen. So here we see that Abraham is giving his servant Eliezer a job to do. He's telling him, go to my father's place and find a wife for my only son, Isaac. Okay. So, um, you know, you look at what um, um, Eliezer says. He does not know what to do, how to go about it. But he says, as for me being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So he doesn't know. He's just going but he says, even as he is walking, God is just leading him step by step. Okay. So, you know, Eliezer would have been like, God, what do I do now? Okay. In those, in those days, they didn't have shadi.com. They didn't have christianmatrimonial.com. They didn't have uh, newspapers. They didn't have, uh, you know, a uh, forerunner magazine like we have here in Bangalore where we get all matrimonial things, you know. Uh, but he just goes on his way trusting God to lead him. And he says, even as he was journeying, God led him. Okay. So maybe sometimes God will just say, leave, go. God will just say, hey, leave your house, go to APC Bible College. That's all. Okay. No further instructions. You just come. And you said, God, I never knew this is happening here. This is this. That is this. You never told me this. If you told me, I would never have come. You should have told me, God. God never reveals all of those things. He just says, go to APC Bible College. You've come, you know, God will lead you in the next step. Okay. So we need to just move on by faith. Okay. So we are going to look at, even as we've laid this foundation, we're going to look at how we can know God's plan and purpose for our lives. And I said, we're going to be looking at nine guideposts. Okay. What's the first one? Recognize. The general teaching and instruction in God's word. Okay, so today we look at so maybe one and the second one is recognize the seeds in your life. Okay, so the very first thing, the very foundational guidepost or indicator of how God wants us or the God wants to reveal his plan and purpose for our life or to help us know which season of life we are in, what is the next season. What is the first way he will guide us and lead us through? How will he lead us and guide us? How will we know God's will? First God's guide. Word. Sorry. God's word, ma'am. God's word, yes. God's word. Everyone lift up your Bibles, please. Yes. And say, you know, I can know God's will through his word. Through his Amen. word. Okay. Amen. So you know, God can never lead us or God will never lead us contrary to his written word. Okay. He will never lead us in a way that contradicts his written scripture. If you want to know anything about your life, don't run to X, Y, Z. Don't run to people. Just open God's word. God's word will lead you and guide you in every area of your life. Life. You will be shocked and amazed to see how God is teaching you, correcting you, training you, leading you uh, where you need to go. Okay. Look at what 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says. Can somebody read that, please? 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, 17. All scripture is given by in inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, pro for reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Amen. So here it says all scripture, 
not only new testament but also old testament okay not only the passages where we read about jesus but also genealogy some of us don't read genealogy it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of god what's the meaning of inspiration means it's the yeah the very breath of god god's knowledge is revelation okay and it's useful for what it's useful for look at your books or your bible it's useful for teaching for reproof for giving proof for verification for correction for instruction and righteousness why is scripture given to us why is scripture given to us look at your bibles okay why is it all given for us for correction reproof instruction righteousness so that what so that look at your bibles and tell me yes so that we may be complete what else thoroughly equipped for every good work work so if you want to be complete what should you do read scripture okay if you want to be equipped in every good work what should you do read scripture if you want to preach you want to become missionary you want to become a pastor you want to become a youth pastor worship leader what should you do read, read scripture. scripture yes we need to read scripture because it thoroughly equips you for every good work okay and god instructs us through his word okay uh, so how does god instruct us firstly how do we know god's will and plan and purpose for our life how god god instructs us through his word thank you yeah yes and he leads us in the way of righteousness okay um so this is a starting point if you want to know anything about your life how to go what decision you need to start looking at god's word look at romans chapter 12 verse 2 what does it say romans 12 verse 2 anyone can unmute your mics and uh, read Go ahead, just unmute your mics and read, please. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. So if you want to know the good, acceptable and pleasing will of God, what should you do? You need to renew your mind when you when your mind is renewed you'll be able to know what is the good acceptable and the perfect will of god so in this verse the very short verse but there are so many things that we can learn from this verse the first thing is this word prove you know it says so that you may prove the greek word means test okay so it's often used for testing metal through fire so when you put metal through fire you can test how strong that metal is how good that metal is okay so it basically means to explore to investigate to examine so god is telling us that we need to prove which means we need to examine we need to test what is the good acceptable and the perfect will of god okay so we will uh, go for our break and we'll come back and we'll continue after the break okay thank you everyone